will it be enough against the bold and resurgent Taliban? And what can be done against insurgent safe havens in Pakistan? Here to help us answer those questions is Richard Wheats. He's an international security expert from the Hudson Institute. Richard, thanks very much for joining us. Thank uh, you so much for having me. Um, the Taliban has mounted several uh, large daring operations, including breaking 1,000 uh, prisoners out of a prison in Kandahar a week before last. How serious of, of a breach is it? And psychologically, is that sort of Afghanistan's version of the Tet Offensive? Well, what we've seen is very interesting. The Taliban has not been doing very well in conventional uh, battles. And before, for a while, they would continue to try and pursue that tactic, but they've realized it's just not going to work. So they've, they're, what they're doing now is relying more on these spectaculars. Uh, the, the jailbreak was the most recent. Uh, earlier in the year, we saw the, the attack in Kabul during the military parade. Um, these instances are, are really designed to try and shape the perception that the, that the Karzai government hasn't been able to consolidate its control, nor NATO. Um, how it plays hearts and minds is hard to assess, but in terms of military effects, it's probably not that great. I mean, uh, NATO was able to recoup afterwards and, and, and with the, and the Afghan lead, launch an effective counteroffensive. So, so the situation is actually better than it might appear. The Correct. Taliban are not gaining as much ground as is perceived. Correct. Uh, I mean, the, the, the war is far from won. Um, but NATO is still winning all the battles, and we know Vietnam doesn't necessarily mean you win the war, right. but it's not, it, they haven't, the Taliban has not been able to, say, seize control of Kandahar, which would be their objective, and, say, establish a provisional government, right. and from there really establish a base of, uh, within, the government, within the country. Um, isn't, is there any way to defeat the Taliban fundamentally without going into the federally administrator, uh, administered tribal areas of Pakistan. I mean, ultimately, doesn't the battle really have to be fought and won over on the other side of the Afghan border? Uh, yes, I think that uh, events during the past few weeks have made quite clear that the Afghan and Pakistan uh, areas should be seen as a single, really, area of operations. Well, the cross-border rocket attacks that took place. Correct. I mean, we've seen the incidents where the U.S. airstrikes killed uh, approximately, it's still unsure, the evidence is unclear, but approximately maybe 11 Pakistani uh, Frontier Corps members. Uh, there have been artillery exchanges back and forth on the border recently. There's this continual cross-border infiltration. It's a, you know, it's a 1,500-kilometer border, uh, and it's very hard to patrol. The, as you mentioned, the Fatah region is somewhat semi-autonomous from the government. Um, but there's no the way... And the authorities aren't particularly eager in exerting control over the Fatah. Right. They've tried different techniques. They relied on military force. Their military didn't do well. They're now trying to work out separate peace agreements. But that means that, in essence, they can, these are becoming sanctuaries for the Taliban to can sally forth and, and, bench and conduct operations in Afghanistan. So there's no way you can end the military conflict in Afghanistan if the sanctuary persists. The problem is how best to do that. I mean, the cross-border strikes, the predator drones who know about taking out the key leaderships. Right. Karzai said that he might send his forces in hot pursuit, which was not really, they don't really have that capacity yet, so it's right. more in gesture. But it's clear that there has to be some way to deal with this. And I think the administration has, has, has thought correctly that uh, one way to really help out is trying to launch a major uh, socioeconomic program in that region because it's lagged behind a lot of the indicators of the rest of right. Pakistan. It's somewhat, you, you, and, and the hope is that over time you give people alternative livelihoods so they don't have to do with narcotics trafficking. You sort of wean them away from violence, moderate them, and that's a way to really address that problem. When it comes to narcotic trafficking, I mean, obviously that's a larger sor large source of revenue for the Taliban. Isn't it smarter and cheaper just to buy at top dollar uh, whatever opium is produced and destroy it as opposed to focusing so much on eradication? Uh, that, has, that has been tried in some areas. Uh, there are several problems in Afghanistan. One, I mean, the one obvious problem is if you start buying from people, that's just going to encourage them to go make more. Right. Uh, and two, we don't, it would cost, since 90% of the world's opium supply, for example, comes from right. uh, Afghanistan, it would just cost way too much. Right. So, that's, you, and maybe it will work in select instances, but there are other means you have to do it. Interdiction is helpful. Uh, ideally, weaning people away from that as a livelihood is really what's going to make a, a major change over the long term. And in this regard, the recent rise in grain prices is helpful because it's now becoming more right. profitable for them to grow grain rather than uh, opium in many cases. Richard, thanks very much for joining us. Thank we appreciate you so much. it. Coming up in my notebook, why this stinky situation is more than a health concern for Italy.